The only joint sitting ever to occur in Australia was in 1974. And in that joint sitting, the federal parliament, working as one single body, decided to approve six bills the six bills that had caused its double dissolution. In our last video, we talked about one of these bills, the Petroleum and Minerals Authority Act. This bill was challenged before the High Court for supposedly not having followed the procedure laid out in Section 57 of the Constitution. Today, we will talk about another controversial bill that was approved in the joint sitting of 74. Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law, and today we will talk about two cases that challenge the possibility of territories having senators. In two successive cases, in 1975 and 1977, the High Court of Australia was to decide whether one of the bills that was approved in the joint sitting was constitutional or not. I am talking about the Senate Representation of Territories Bill. Wait, 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 no. Representation of territories in the Senate. But, Renato, I learned in your videos that there's a difference between the states and the territories. And I also learned from your video that the Senate is the house of the states. That means that the framers designed the state, this institution, to function and exist to guarantee the interests of the states as equal parts in the federation. Now you're saying that the territories will have representation in the Senate? Yeah, that's right. But maybe the reasons that you just given were the reasons why the Senate decided not to approve that bill and the reason why it ultimately went to the joint sitting and was approved there where the senators are in the minority. Anyways, it doesn't really matter now because the fact is that that bill was approved in the joint sitting and it became an act of parliament, the Senate Representation of Territories Act of 1973. But still, Western Australia and Queensland decided to object. In 1975, in Western Australia and Commonwealth, known as the first territories representation case, the state of Western Australia decided to challenge the constitutionality of that act. They challenged the validity of the act by saying that that act represented an invalid exercise of the powers expressed in section 122. The power in section 122 could not be exercised that way because of a limitation expressed in section 7 of the constitution. Section 7, as you remember, says that the Senate shall be composed of senators for each state directly chosen by the people of the state. And section 122 says that the parliament may make laws for the government of any territory and may allow the representation of such territory in either house of parliament to the extent and on the terms which it thinks fit. Can you see the problem? Section 7 expressly says that the Senate is composed of representatives of each state. But section 122 says that the Parliament may allow the representation of territories in either House of Parliament. A majority of 4 to 3 in the High Court, with Chief Justice Powick and Justices Gibbs and Stephen in dissent, affirmed the constitutionality of that act. The court said that it was within the power, the territory's power of section 122 to provide for the representation of the two mainland territories in the Senate with two senators each. Chief Justice Bowick in his honor's dissent said that the dominating purpose of the constitution was to establish an indissoluble federal commonwealth. This commonwealth had a bicameral parliament which included the senate as the representative of the peoples of the states. For him this feature is entrenched, it permeates the whole constitution and it cannot be derogated, not even by section 128 without the approval of the peoples of the states. Justice Mason in the majority reasoned that the words that are expressed in section 122 are wide and general. And so the proposal could not be unconstitutional because Parliament saw fit to give representation in the Senate to these two territories. The outcome then of the first territorial representations case 
was that the High Court said that the law was valid. But soon after, in another case, Chief Justice Bowick said that the court should be invited again to judge on that matter before a serious departure from the federal nature of the Constitution becomes entrenched. In Brazil, where I'm from, we have an expression for that. We say someone raises the ball so another one can spike. This volleyball metaphor can be applied here because Chief Justice Powick was just raising the ball so the state of Queensland decided to spike it. In 1977, the High Court of Australia decided on Queensland and Commonwealth, the second territory's representation case. The decision, however, did not change. By a majority of five against two, the High Court confirmed its previous decision and affirmed the constitutionality of the Senate Representations of Territories Act of 1973. But what happened? Five against two now? Why? The reason for it was that Justice Gibbs and Stephen, who had been in dissent before, they decided to follow the precedent of the court, although they disagreed with the outcome and the decision in the first case. They followed a doctrine that is known as star decisis, where the judges will follow the precedent that the court has already laid out. We'll talk about that maybe in another video. I should note though that there is no rule that a constitutional court should always follow its own decisions. But in this case, Justice Gibbs and Stephen so thought it was wise to do so. Another relevant aspect was that senators had already been elected to represent the territories in the Senate. So the justice just decided to follow the precedent. Today, according to the Commonwealth Electoral Act, Division 2, Section 41, the Australian Capital Territory and the Northern Territory shall each be represented in the Senate by two senators for the territory, directly chosen by the people of the territory voting as one electorate. I hope you enjoyed learning about the circumstances and the cases that led to the possibility of the territories having senators. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button and also subscribe to our channel because then I can see you next time. Until then, ciao.